In this presentation we're going to look at fitting an X-topology surface to a laser scan point cloud. We're going to focus entirely on how we set up the shape and how we capture that from the point cloud itself rather than looking at the boundaries at the beginning of that process. We'll then go on to validate that surface with respect to the point cloud to look at the accuracy. So first we'll start by opening a laser model. So here we see the the laser model we had earlier in the, uh, the presentation. Presently this being shown with the colour that was captured in the, in the physical survey and there was a lot of areas that were quite dark. So what we can do is enhance the colour. We can see the underside of the vessel now. Uh, we can see that that areas where the uh, the whole form was shiny haven't been captured at all. We also see that we've got some areas of the underwater body which hasn't been captured either. It's not clear why. Some some sparse areas around there. So this view gives us an overall visualization of the data that we have. Um, we can also have some uh, local visualizations which we can use for um, looking in more detail about particular parts of the vessel. So here we'll go down the stem and we can see we're picking out there with some of the points the uh, some of the protection on the bow, on the stem. We'll go along the stem and we can run to the transom. So doing this kind of thing is quite helpful for picking out the uh, the features along the keel, which can often be quite challenging to pick out with geometry. Uh, if we go to the transom itself, we can see that we've got some underwater lighting features um, and other details that, that would be quite, quite difficult to pick out. And, we can make a decision now whether we're going to include them in our design. We can also pick out some of the arrangement of the curves that we're going to deal with. And then we'll need to look at the shape of the hull form in more detail. For that we can use the um, the sections. And this is kind of giving us uh, the 3D contours of the shape that we're going to deal with picked out in the points that are intersected with the planes that we cut through the model. And this is quite a, a useful tool. Ultimately, these are, this data is the, the data that's used to, to generate the curves. So we can make some modifications. We can uh, just constrain this to the port side, for example. These get reprocessed. And we can see all the, uh, all the designs there. We'll, uh, we'll move on to just work with the sections. So now pretty much we can have a, a body plan. And using the, the body plan, for example, just as a, a visual view, we'll start to make up the whole surface itself. At this point, I'll bring in the, uh, the curves, the boundary curves, because um, these take a bit of time to generate. It's quite challenging to find some of the features, particularly in this model, that, um, the features that make the, the best shape. So it was quite a few hours to make these curves, but you'll see now that once I've got those curves in place, generating the whole form is quite a, a quick activity. So starting out, we'll use the body plan and generate a, a sectional, a diagonal section through it just to illustrate how this process works. So I'm effectively going to draw a plane. So there we are. We have a section, a diagonal section through the, uh, the hole there. We can see all the sampled points. We see a gap and more sampled points. Now the display tells me that the the mean accuracy of this curve is within three millimeters of the uh, the uh, scan data and a max deviation of 21 millimeters. I can have a look at the curvature. Uh, we can increase the display so we can see how that's doing. So it's 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 pretty good. Um, I can improve the quality of the curvature by introducing smoothing. Obviously, as I introduce smoothing, then the the um, accuracy of the the, the fit to the surface starts to reduce. What you can do is just introduce a very small amount of smoothing and the curve quality improves very quickly uh, without de moving away from the surface too far. But generally if I'm fitting to a surface I'll try to work with zero smoothing. You can also see a, a graphical visualization of the deviation. Uh, basically these lines are indicating much like the curvature the difference relative difference between the curve and the, the surface itself and we can enhance that. So what we would do at this stage is pretty much 
use these displays to determine the number of control points that we're going to use along the length of the vessel. And then once we've chosen a number that works out well, try and stick to it so that each curve has the same mathematical model. So that's a, a small illustration. We'll now go through the process of generating each of the diagonals for this surface. So we'll fit around five, five curves along the length of the vessel. We'll start around here and I'm just drawing uh, these curves. So we'll create the curve there and we'll just carry on through this process. And we'll make sure that each curve has the same number of points. And we'll have a curve here. Sometimes I can pick out two sections, so we'll need to remove that segment and just work with that one there. And we'll have another one here. And a final one posted here. I'll try that again. There we go. So that is the top one. We'll remove that section and just work with that one. So tap points. So what we've done here now is created a selection of curves that just trace the shape of the whole form in that area. They all have the same number of control points. Um, They've been done very quickly, so there's a good chance that they won't have a perfect fit. Certainly around the bow of the vessel, I would probably go for a different shape, but it's just a, a quick example. So now we'll need some curves crossing in the other direction. And we'll just trace these as cubic splines. So I'm just putting in a, quite a few curves, more than I want, but that's because there's quite a lot of enough diagonals, and I want to keep the aspect ratio of the, the patches not to a uh, high ratio. We'll go through like this and we'll put one there and we'll start snapping to some points and pick out the other features. There should be another curve there like so. So once we've got some curves now we can generate the surface like so. So that's a curve surface based on those curves. We'll now get put on the contours to see what we've got there. So now we can see we've probably got a fairly smooth surface and that's resulting from the quality of the the least squares fit. Like so. Uh, we'll hide the sections for now. There we go. So we can have a look at that in its uh, rendered format and look at the, the quality from the light perspective uh, shading on the whole form. So we can see it's got quite a lot of smoothness, but it will diverge towards the challenging areas of the surface because we've really not worked on that. Uh, we can also have a look at the curvature characteristics directly. So we'll pop off the contours and we can see that even though we spent a relatively small amount of time we've got a, a reasonable amount of curvature quality on that. So we have a good surface in terms of its curvature characteristics. Have we got an accurate surface um, in respect of the, the laser data? So we can take that forward and do some analysis. So we'll create a an object that allows us to compare the surface with the, the laser scan data. And much like the, um, the curvature analysis, this allows us uh, a pictorial view of the quality of the surface. Uh, we'll get rid of, again, the curves will come back, so get rid of those. I'll get rid of the mesh and here we can see we've got some shading. We've got some blank areas where the 
density of the point cloud is not dense enough to um, draw a conclusion to the position of the surface so if there's no not enough statistical data in that area we've got some red areas where the uh, tolerance of the surface is outside what's defined presently it's defined as 20 millimeters we can take that to 10 millimeters go down to 5 millimeters and the, the red areas increase as it starts to find the areas of the surface that are outside that tolerance. We can look at that from a sided perspective. So we find that the red areas on one side and the blue areas on the other side. Um, we can also look at the areas of the, the surface that are within the thickness of the cloud in terms of kind of the min and max normal distances. So you can see now we can start to see how, how well we're doing with the the, the metrics of the data itself. So we get quite a lot of feedback and these are a useful set of tools to um, present to other people that might not be working on the project, present to the customer, highlight directly how accurate you're getting your surface.